say some very offensive things, like when? you know that your parents met at a funeral. But why? Why should I deny? Let me tell. I tell single people, um, Amina, if you are single and you are watching, do not go only to weddings and uh, corporate parties and uh, bars and clubs, hoping to uh, find your future wife or husband. They could be somewhere crying in a funeral, because me, my father. Do, do you, in Kenya they call it Disco Matanga. Did you ever go to Disco Matanga? No. You see, they defend for hunt. Now, who is that? What is that you're playing? <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Can you fire that boy? <laughs> now, let me tell you, eh? I mean, uh, oh, the difference between white people and their funerals and yeah. us African people with our funerals yeah. is, for us black people, it is a celebration of life. Yeah. We dance and celebrate. Yeah. So, the, I remember there's a certain politician in Nigeria who had just passed away. So they put his coffin, then they put people around, they were dancing the whole night. They put a, a really long, 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 was yeah. the one who's being played. Mm -hmm. So my father was dancing, my mommy was dancing, and after 10 minutes, they disappeared, and after nine months, I appeared. Yeah, so, okay. Mm, so, oh, so that's what happened. All right, so blessing. I will play us a song. I want to see how this is that people dance and approach people at funerals. I always uh, thought it was really? the story that you made. It was no, a it's lie. a true thing. All right, blessing. Play Your a song. husband could be crying somewhere. Is that a funeral song, my brother? <laughs> what funerals have you been attending to? This is a blessing. Wait, Don't that God has blessed you? Wait, is there is there is there a funeral song? This is a funeral song. Like which one? E, is it? E? I don't know. E. Is that oh, a funeral song? This is a blessing. I don't know, but it would work. E. Hey, so blessing. We'll try that one. We thank God. Blessing has suffered in this industry, <laughs> yes. I can tell you. For him Why? to be here, he's, you see now he's trending as a Why? blessing. Is, uh, mm. Blessing, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, Play for me a funeral song. Yeah? And then you show us. Uh, you teach people. I think, you know, this is, this is good. You're teaching people how to find love. There was a time, I think it was a few years ago, there were very many women at KICC. Mm. It was a prayer. He was called Pastor or Patrick Ojibane. Uh -huh. hey, he's from Nigeria. Uh -huh. He was praying for, for single ladies. To, okay. to, uh, to, to get married. And I tell you, this, uh, the Bible says that he will bless you uh, exceedingly, abundantly, more than what you've asked for. Yeah. So ladies need to be specific what they are asking God for. Don't just go in front of God and say, oh, Father God, Lord, I want a, oh, Lord, I want a man to marry me. Be, tell God, I want a CEO, I want a financial manager, I want a, 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 a lawyer. Tell God specifically what you want. Anyway. Because you, hey, you cannot go in front of God and tell God, oh, Father God, I want a man to marry me. A man will give me security. A man will make me feel secure and protected. Then God gives you a watchman, you refuse. <laughs> Did you not want security? So why are you disturbing God? That is exactly a man who will build me. God will give you a mujango man. That man will build you. It's exactly what you ask for. So That's, be specific. Yeah. So when, when, you're single now, right? Hi, 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 me and wedding tents. Yeah. Me and wedding speakers. <laughs> me and the, hey, we are like this. I'm but you a, MC, you're like the biggest M wedding MC in the country, right? Uh, I don't, don't, okay. No, I'm a are. humble person, but if you put it like that, <laughs> yeah. how can I deny? Well, this is the thing, I, I love love. Yeah. I mean, I won't lie, and I think nobody, nobody would ever want to miss the chance of being loved and uh, be loving somebody and loving them back. Uh, yes, I have, I have been single for a while. Yeah. Uh, it has not been easy, especially with this weather. <laughs> People have been investing in wedding rings, uh, bouquets. I've been investing in duvets in yeah. toy market. At least I've been promoting. My singleness has been promoting and creating jobs yes. for and employment. <laughs> for people in toy market. <laughs> so, uh, but um, um, on a serious note, Amina, yeah. after, after, after my, my, my divorce, um, I said I'm going to take some time off to, to better myself as a man. Mm. Not like I was not a good man. But because I left so curious of where did I go wrong as a man. And I went into doing a lot of research and watching a lot of YouTubes and watching a lot of spiritual, uh, uh, spiritual fathers mm. who, have, who have been speaking about being a man, being a father, being in marriage. Yeah. I, I, was so, I, was so, I was so zealous and I was so keen in knowing what to do in being, being you. Yeah. And one of the things I came to find out is that people get into marriages expecting somebody else to make you happy. And then I've been tell, I've been saying, I've been telling my boys is the next woman will come into my. She better know that she's not coming to make me happy. She's coming as a cream on the cake because the cake is already prepared. I am whole. Yeah. I am full. But I am is happy. in your life already. I'm eh? kidding. Eh, go on. Uh, really? <laughs> so this issue of somebody saying, "Oh my God, if you go, I will die. If you go, I will never succeed." Ah, there are many women I told if, if we separate, I will die. I'm still alive. I'm hitting a, a, a third floor in the next, in the next couple of years. Yeah. So it's about finding yourself, being yourself, make yourself happy before you can say you can make somebody else happy. That's very important. Mm. And you know what's so interesting is that we thought as women, you mm. know, we, we, we feel that pressure more 
or rather we used to think that we feel that pressure more than men mm. where you know the responsibility of the success of your marriage you know solely relies on the woman because there's a lot society is really hard on women when it comes very to marriage so we didn't know that guys also go through that depressive phase where they're like oh man what did i do what did i didn't what did it, it I happens do? it happens yeah. it, just as especially when you get to a level a okay. psychologist call it a level of self-actualization mm -hmm. whereby you now want to you know you're just curious where did I go wrong? And it's not only ladies. And see that again, this is where we go wrong, where people think uh, it's, it's only, the, the, it's only the, the role of the woman to make everything work. It's the role of both the two, the two to make it work. Not, not only that one person. Mm. All right. Mm. Um, and then also something interesting. We, oh, there was this story that came out of domestic violence about you. Did mm. it hurt your career? Did it, was it true? Was it, uh, you know what I mean? Because we've never discussed it. We've never talked about Actually, it. Actually, I've never talked about it anyway. I never talked about it. And I'm pretty sure my, my, my ex-wife is watching the mother to my two beautiful babies, Debbie and Faith, they're watching. And first of all, I must say this on national TV. If the woman I respect so much, and she knows I tell her every single day because we talk and we laugh. It's my ex-wife. We have become the best of friends. Um, considering whether there was domestic violence or not, um, this is what I would like to tell the public. Um, at times, it's never what it looks it is. And at times, for those of us who are relationships, at times you know how things can get heated. And, and um, so many things can be labeled on someone, and they may not be true or not be true. Because I, later on, there was Father's Day, and um, uh, she wrote to me a very long text, and, I, and uh, she apologized, and I apologized back. And it's all like, I don't want to say, Amina, that I was a very perfect husband or a perfect father. I had my faults. But I think my parents have brought me up well with the right moral standards over mine. Mm. Yes. To not hit a woman. Yes. So you're saying no, it didn't happen. No. All right. Mm. Um, did it hurt your career? Because stories went on for weeks. I, 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 good thing is, I looked at it from a very brighter side. Okay. Is that um, it proved to me that I'm a big brand. Mm. Yes. If I was able to control the whole entertainment industry for a whole week, the blogs, the television, radio, and everywhere, that means it was a big brand. But then again, at, for around two weeks, yes, it hurt my brand because mm. a few corporate companies had uh, taken, a, 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 taken, some, taken, taken a step back. But um, one thing is, it, it's, it's very clear, and I thank God for that, is that I mean, I'm a man on my knees. Mm. And one thing, those, those ones on my close circle can tell you, I mean, I pray a lot. And I told God, if, if, if I am guilty of all this, let me, let me, then let me get my punishment. Okay. But if I'm innocent, let me be vindicated. And of course, take me back to where my brand was. And by the grace of God, I think after that, my, my, my brand analyst was telling me my brand actually grew out, actually 10 times than what it was. And after that, I was actually, the next month, I was actually in a tour to the U.S. for a whole two months, a whole, actually a whole three months. Yeah. And I came back and things have just been happening. Yeah. Yes. And you should be going on another tour again. Because we feel like you've now branched out into TV and now you do emceeing. And yeah. You know, you started out as a comedian and now that's sort of like, you know, fading away and you've stopped stand up. Uh, that's how we feel like. Let me, if I, we have a clip, we have a mm. clip. Let's show you this clip and then we get back and we talk. Give pizza for a hunt and tell them Jesus oh, yeah. is alive. <laughs> if they're looking ugly, tell them the devil is a liar. <laughs> Those are the kind of things that pastors put us through. There's a day I was sitting in church and the pastor said, Brother, sister, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God will increase you. Mombasa people, my neighbor was a 90 kg lady. How am I supposed to tell her God will increase you? <laughs> and another one told me, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God will double your portion. My neighbor was a pregnant woman. How am I supposed to tell a pregnant woman, God will double your portion? The kind of pain she's already going through. <laughs> my god what was that what, what the joke what you were writing how you look <laughs> first of all as in i think i'm a true definition of poverty as you can see as in <laughs> poverty is just a walking billboard of poverty um oh but i thank god i mean that, that that has been the journey and i remember yeah. those are the days and a big shout out to jalango and otos who were our anchors at that time who were really pushing us. We had a show called, that was a show called Kenya Corner back in the days. I think that was almost five, six years ago. And that is when now, I was now coming fully into stand-up comedy. Yeah. And um, stand-up comedy is always going to be my love, anytime, any day. And I'm actually planning a one man, my one man special very soon. Very soon. Oh, yeah. Well, shoot. Very soon. Shoot, 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 shoot. Okay, go, shoot. All the witches, shoot, shoot. <laughs> you will not succeed. Oh, shoo, shoo, <laughs> anyway. So, <laughs> So I'm, I'm planning because um, I, I feel it's time. Um, okay. 
being now eight years in the industry, I think it's time oh, wow. for, and of course, Dr. Franke being Kenya's king of English stand-up comedy, mm -hmm. I think my fans have, have really impressed on me that they want a special for me, and uh, I should be releasing the dates very soon. Okay. Mm. Um, so you have a talk show. How, how, how is it? I mean, now you're oh! on TV. It's interesting. It's beautiful. It's amazing. This is the best thing. And I'm going to tell guys that God will never, God will never give you a Mercedes Benz if you have, if you have the dream of a Pro Box. Mm. And this is the thing. It's this uh, Thousand Night Live with Dr. Fennec is a dream that I've always had for so many years. Mm. And actually, it was on my laptop for almost six years. I just kept on waking up every morning and looking and telling God, I want this thing to come into life. So why were you not? Were you doing something about it, or you were just waking up praying and? No and you know, I, I I I used to wake up and pray, and of course I I was I was more waiting on on God's time. Okay. And it's very dangerous. I normally tell guys, especially when you're bearing a vision, at times it's very dangerous. When you bo when you bear the the vision and it's too early, mm -hmm. the vision has to get to nine months, mm -hmm. then for you to now bear it. And of course, I think by the time TNL was coming on air, it was time to for it to now come out and now start growing. Okay. And I'm so excited. It's, this is the most amazing thing ever right now in my career. I'm so yeah. excited. And of course, a big shout out to Cream de la Cream, uh, who's we've become boys, we've become brothers, mm. becomes such an amazing element of the show. That's fantastic.